O Sacrament Most Holy. Good morning. morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear people of God, for us to participate worthily in the sacrifice of the Holy Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die though I have done none of the things with which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I will have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come sit with us and inform us since God has given you the prestige of old age. But he replied, 
Separate these two from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated, one from the other, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me, under what tree you saw them together? Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you. Lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried out, Blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor. They put them to death. Thus was innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The verse before the gospel. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion that he may live. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. 
Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. What do you say? They said this to test him so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have some beautiful stories for us to process this morning the story of Susanna in the first reading, and the story of this woman in the gospel reading. I bet one way or the other, we may have heard these stories before, either that of Susanna or maybe the gospel reading, in, either in the church or in a different setting. These stories share striking similarities. In the first instance, they were both women, obviously. Secondly, they had accusers, and the accusers, ironically, were men and leaders in the community. And thirdly, we, ha- we hear nothing about the men, right? If it was an adultery, there has to be another party, but that party was significantly left out in the accusation and the desire to bring this woman to justice. Where they differ is the fact that whereas Susanna was entirely innocent, that could not be said of the woman in the gospel reading. In all, we see that God intervened, either through Daniel in the first reading and through Jesus in the gospel reading, ensuring that this woman were not condemned, but rather they were set free. They were set free and they received mercy from God. It is easy for us to get consumed with the whole story and miss a critical message underlining the two readings for today. And what is that? That these men who were the accusers were guilty of the very thing they were accusing others of. Because if you read dearly into the first reading, you will see that these men had, a, had an evil intention towards Susanna. And in the gospel reading too, we see that when Jesus told them, let the one who is without sin cast the first stone, they all began to leave one after the other. So the very thing they sought to condemn, to kill others for, they were significantly guilty of it. In essence, calling us to look deeply into our hearts before we cast the stone on the other person. We see people who are wrong. We judge them easily. I can't do that. We drive on the highway. We see those people beating the red lights. We see those people who are speeding in our places of work, in our communities. We see those who we think are doing the wrong thing. And in our own heart, we cast aspersions on them. We are judging them. We are laying, laying blames on them. Hold on a moment. Have you considered your own self 
in essence, rather than focus so much on others, let the searchlight begin from your own conscience. Start from yourself. And from then on, you can shine the light to others. Secondly, the readings, these readings are preparing us for what is to come. On Palm Sunday and Good Friday, we will see something similar to this. The elders will stand and they will lay accusations on Jesus, who is innocent of all the accusations. The people will stand by the wayside. They will look and they will all accuse him together. This, this reading, therefore, is preparing us for the high point of our Christian life, the Holy Week. It's preparing us for Good Friday, reminding us that it is time for us to ask ourselves, am I, will I be like the bystanders, those who will shout crucify him? Or I will be like Daniel, who will stand and say, this woman is being judged falsely. On the cross, while people shouted at Jesus, some said, this man truly is the son of God. The prayers of the faithful. For our church, may God continue to purify and sanctify us, making us ever more holy in his sight. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for judges, lawyers, and all who work for justice, may they be guided by the spirit of truth and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are falsely accused, may God defend and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are gathered here, may we be freed and strengthened by our encounter with Christ in this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who have died, may they soon enjoy the eternal peace of Christ in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, holy marriage, permanent diaconate, and the single life, we pray. Lord hear our prayer. For those in public office, that they may be inspired by the Holy Spirit to serve and protect all life from conception to natural death, we pray. For all those remembered in our prayer petition thank you book, that through God's everlasting love, they will receive the help they need, we pray. Lord, for the repose of the soul of Jim Mater, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, God our Father, give us a true contrite heart that we may seek pardon for our offenses. We ask this to Christ our Lord. you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant to pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all who pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with thee always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward towards you, to Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. O Sacrament, most holy.